You know, coronament hatches are one of my favorite hatches of the year. Sometimes they can be straightforward and simple. Other times they can be frustratingly difficult. That can especially happen toward the end of the hatch. You can see trout taking flies off or near the surface, but they're refusing all of your pupil patterns. At times like this, when the chronomid is just breaking free of the husk, they're emerging, and those can be the ones that trout are focusing on. These are sitting ducks, as they can't fly away yet because they're not few free of the pupil husk, and that husk is dangling in the water as a signal that the, that fly is stuck. A, an emerger pattern can work wonders at times like this, and thanks to Ian Forbes back in 1992, he published an, a, a chronomid emerger pattern in BC Outdoors magazine. I have tried it over the years and found that in those rare occasions when the trout are focused on that, this is a magic pattern to have in your box. Let's take a look at tying one of these flies. Welcome to my fly bench. You know, emerger patterns have been around for a very long time. Oddly, they're not getting a lot of press these days. So today we're going to counter that trend. Let's take a look at a coronament emerger that's been a very effective fly for me. Here are the materials you're going to need to tie this fly. Into my vise, I've got a Togans number 12 2x long curved nymph hook. Now, despite the name, it will float given the right properties in the tying materials, and that's just what we're going to do with it. It's a fairly light wire, and I like these hooks for their length as they provide the length I need for all three materials that go onto this fly. So, we wrap it in there to just about opposite the hook point or the barb. Get a little deeper than that. Now, first thing that comes in is our brown marabou, and we're going to take about an inch of that off the main stem, and tear off, and we bunch that up, and then we're going to tie it in about the length of the hook, and we'll tear it to length afterwards. We don't want it that long in the end. I'll show you how I, I tear that down. So we're just going to secure that in there with a couple of wraps and get those tag ends out of the way, make it neat and tidy. Cut off the tag ends and give it a few more wraps to wrap those down and secure them into place. Now, what I do here is I want to shorten the marabou, but I want to do it without scissors. I don't want it to look cut. So I'll pinch it to the length I want with my right hand and with my left, I'll just tear off those tips. And there we go, we've got a nice sort of ragged thing that's a little less than hook length and uh, looks very natural as we tear it to length. There we go. That'll flutter nicely in the water and give us the lifelike movement we're looking for. Our next piece of tying in material is medium or actually small copper wire. We could go with medium, but uh, extra small is definitely too small to drag the tail end of the fly under the surface, which is what you want. You want this half in and half out of the water. You want it in the surface film. You want it to sit there with the butt end under the water and the top end above. It's designed perfectly to do that. Now we're wrapping that copper wire as tightly as we can. We want to get as much on there as we can for the weight. It, it provides segmentation, which is fine and it's important, but more importantly in this fly's design is the, the weight it's adding to the tail of the fly to drag that tail in under. I've gone with uh, brown because in my observations, regardless of the pupil color, the uh, nymphal husk will be have a brownish tinge to it. And uh, so I've gone that way, but you're certainly welcome to play with that. Go with olive gray 
Um, whatever colors you like, you, you might end up with actually a fly that's better than mine. But this one has done the trick on more than a few occasions. Now we're going to bring that tying thread forward to the eye, just short of it. And just enough room for a head at the front there. Our final material is deer hair. And we cut a tuft of that off the hide. Not too big. Um, we don't want to bunch things up too much. And so I'm just uh, paring that down to the cluster size I want. And experience will tell you when you've got enough and when you've got too much. It'll only take one or two flies for you to figure that out. You may hit it on the first try too. Now deer hair as it comes off the hide, it has all these uneven tips. The way we mend that is with a deer hair stacking tool. It's a two-part tool. Uh, you can go with other ones. Some, some of them are just one part. I like this one. Uh, and I put my deer hair tips in first. And then we just simply tap that on a surface about a dozen times. After doing that, we pull our brass insert out, and lo and behold, our deer hair is all, the tips are all aligned. Pull those out of there. And now what we want to do is, for proportion's sake, this is another little trick here to get it right. For this particular fly, I go with the tips equal with the length of the tail. And I now I give that a couple of secure wraps at the front. And without letting go of the deer hair, now work my fingers back and slowly wrap my way back toward the copper wire. While I'm doing this, I'm pulling on the deer hair slightly towards myself because it tends to, with the wrapping of the thread going away from me, tends to want to roll over that way. And to counter that, I just put a slight tug on it towards myself. I bring that back to the copper wire and then back forward again. Now, deer hair's qualities, they're hollow, and you've just secured the uh, deer hair natural equivalent of a cork on here with this tied-in deer hair. All of that air up there is going to help support that fly on the surface. Our final step is to now bring that deer hair forward without bringing all the, mo the uh, marabou with it. And that's the bit of a fussy part, picking away at it, trying to get it forward. There we go. And as I've got it on there now, I'm going to pinch it securely and then give my thread two good wraps before letting go and pulling back. Now I'm going to cinch that down very tight. And the final step is to pull that deer hair back and build ourselves a nice conical head. Want a nice clean head up here. Hold this thing in place. And once I've got that head built up, I'll give the thread a touch of super brushable super glue. Pull the deer hair back again. Wrap those, that wet thread in there to get that glue securely into those wraps. And finish with the whip finish tool. We'll give that Four wraps of the whip finish. One, two, and four. And release the whip finish tool from the thread. Cut it off. And you've got yourself a coronum and a merger. This fly will typically orient itself upright in the water. And that marabou will dangle down there tantalizingly. The deer hair up here representing the legs and wings of the coronamid. And uh, the Bulbous thorax there representing the body of the chronomid trying to extract itself from the nymphal husk. Takes on this are typically light. They'll sip it under because that's a sitting duck for any trout. And uh, you can lift the rod right away or maybe with your trout you might have to pause that second, that zen moment while you wait for line to tighten up before you set the hook. Uh, you will catch fish on this in that final stage of the chronomid hatch. Trout often focus on, on those emergers. Good luck out there.